<laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, uh, I, once you got to the Calc 3 stuff, I stopped following because I've already been, yeah, writing a ton and I knew I'd have to write tonight. But yeah, it was definitely uh, tricky material to say the least. But yeah, I was drinking yesterday because I, all that junk that happened. So I needed a day off. How you been? Um, good. They closed the gyms yet or no? No. So weird, man. I was at plant. So, you know, I think I've told you I do stuff within restaurants. I don't work for a restaurant, weird job. But um, so when they closed indoor dining, it kicked my like side contracting gig over again. Um, but I was at Planet Fitness like literally the night before this happened. And I mean, you could, and yeah, I have no problem with this stuff, but you can like be there right next to someone, probably two feet away on a machine. Uh, sorry, I live near a police station. Across, across the um, but, or a fair driver, whatever. Uh, but you could, um, you know, you could be really close to someone and no big. And then like the place where I was doing stuff out of, they had their whole life, you know, we all had to wear a mask style stuff and you had to be six feet apart and all this stuff. And I just find it so funny that it's like, hey, close this thing where they're generally following the rule. I, I just, I feel like sometimes it's random chance what they decide to close. So yeah, that one I don't feel like uh, dealing with today. So we'll close indoor dining. Well, my next door neighbor who I told you tested positive. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, he's, he's a minority owner in the winery. Oh yeah, he got closed too. And yeah, but so he's in this business and his buddy owns Goat Hill Tavern. Oh man. Yeah. And the first night it opened up, his friend sent him a picture yeah. from Goat Hill and it just wall to wall people. Yeah. I mean, you know, here's the thing. It, oh, go ahead. Sorry. But at the gym, I mean, I, I, you know, I guess as long as you're wiping stuff down, I mean, yeah. It's seriously, it's not a lot of people. I mean, like I, yeah. I went into the 11 o'clock today because I needed to, I needed to help. I had my water, my hot, our hot water heater broke just out oh, of okay. nowhere. And uh, so the guy was $1,400 later, you know. Yeah, uh, nice. And so here good. I was just contemplating getting a kick ass. I have an opportunity to get this really high-end e-mountain bike for oh. almost nothing oh uh, yeah buddy is trying to sell but yeah man i have yeah, not... a friend in the thing let me see how many people are here 40 yeah and try to get it up to 50. i'm not a. Uh, am not you know whatever i i understand why they want to close the bars um i just don't think you can have a successful economy where at every three weeks to a month you close down all the businesses and then hope everybody somehow survives for X period of time till they are allowed to somehow restart again. Um, especially when I think I told you the reason why they're closing down or the hospitals are getting overwhelmed is because they don't want to lose their profit margins by adding another bed or any nurses. So it just kind of seems insane to unemploy roughly a million people um, for at least an additional three weeks so that a hospital doesn't lose, you know, I, I don't know what the, the yeah. profit margins would be, maybe a hundred thousand bucks, I guess. Um, so that's that to me is I mean so if anybody's getting to med school please know why you're doing it you're doing it for money <laughs> no other reason that's a good reason to be a doctor I put my earphone in because of there's a very important hot dog eating contest that's going to happen in, in about five minutes who's uh is it still the dude um there's like an Asian dude who's really good he used to be like the best I can't remember his name I'm Johnny sure. Chestnut Ah, uh, no, this was a long time ago, man. This is probably 10 years ago that I was following hot dog eating contests. But. Well, anyway, it's not what it is, is I listen to ESPN radio all day long, the yeah. local guys. Yeah. And the, and one, Steve Mason from the three o'clock show and Alan Sliwa from the six o'clock show, they're oh. all going back and forth. And so now it's six, they're going to have a hot dog eating contest and then there's an over under. So I'm going to try to listen to it. It's Kobayashi, man. The guy who like won like seven years in a row. That's what I'm thinking of. Yeah, it's, uh, it's hard. But anyway, Johnny, so Chestnut got on the Mason in Ireland show yesterday. Oh, he's and he's giving too. Mason all these tips. I know this is just going to be pretty funny. But anyways, um, 
Yeah, I had to go on to campus yesterday after she closed it. And uh, so far, I haven't gotten in trouble. Yeah. Mariana needs to go and get her chair. I don't know. Me, me going like 30 minutes after the email is one thing, but Mariana going on Saturday, she might get in trouble. I mean, who's, is there like some guy out there? Last time I checked, there was like one security guard working there. I mean, is he like checking like the cameras or, I mean, I don't think. I don't know. I, I, I made a big joke out of it. I was all in a group text. Of, I heard and, and Andy was like super upset with you. He's like, what if I get this? Yeah. And on and on and on. So, but um, yeah. Yeah. Weird times, man. So I had to spend 1400 bucks on a hot water heater. That just sucked. Okay, well, let's see. 41 are here. Do you do a tankless one? At least? No, because you have to have you have to have bigger diameter pipes for those. My next door neighbor, the COVID mm -hmm. guy. Okay. He just had that put in and I was talking to his guy, like, ooh, I want that in my house. And he goes, Well, your pipes aren't can't take it. So if it's an older house, they can't. Uh, newer house, you have to run all, well, some of them you have to run new lines. My uh, house was built in 1950-something, so it's it's pretty damn old. Yeah, you're going to do the whole, you're going to need to do the whole thing. Yeah. All right, um, let's do the screen thing. We're going to keep it kind of short tonight, seeing as it's the big party weekend. So I, I only want to talk about uh you know, just one thing. But, didn't, they, didn't they close all the beaches already today as well? <laughs> uh, yeah, you can they, go. I mean, you can go. You just can't park there. Uh, oh. Yeah. They're I, think New, I think Newport is shut down, though, on Saturday. Oh, what no. are they going to do? They're going to have all the cops hanging out outside there? I, I hear for the, I've seen the, them do it. I've seen them. You know, I heard some of the counties are going to do the fireworks, but you have to go to the city city hall to to get uh, a permit to park, whatever that is. Yeah, I'm just gonna drink here. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about our plan. So this is, would be kind of an important concept. Like if I've got a curve given by, let's say y equals f of x, where x is gonna run between A and B, um, it might look like this. Well, here's A, here's B, and it might go something like that. Okay, so here's what we know. Oh, I have to mute. So hold on, that undo this. Somebody watching TV. So we're gonna do that. Okay. Okay. All right, so here we are, and what we know how to do so far with this stuff is we know how to figure out slopes of tangent lines. We know how to figure out concavity and therefore inflection points. Kind of looks like that'd be an inflection point right there. We also know how to compute the area underneath this curve above the x axis. Okay. But now we want to figure out how long the thing is. Okay. And this would be very important to like civil engineers and stuff like that. If you want to know how long the road is that you're designing okay so this is our first um, little run with arc length we will come back to arc length when we get into chapter 10 we're going to skip we skip nine until the end and then come back so anyways um, how are we going to figure out the length of this curve all right well Maybe we can like take a page out of the Archimedes book. So Archimedes was figuring out 
better and better interpretations of, of pi by figuring out areas. Well, if he was trying to figure out circumferences, what he might have done is separated things up and then calculated this distance. Okay, now of course, he doesn't have the XY grid to work with and you know, he's just a man of his times. Okay, so for us, what we're gonna do is, this is the construction of, construction. Okay, so let's let F be some kind of C function on the interval A, B. Okay, now, obviously we're, what we're gonna do here is eventually we're gonna integrate, okay? So the function is gonna at least need to be continuous, all right? And it, we might come across something else where it might need to be differentiable, okay? So let's find out. So what we'll do is we'll partition the interval a, b into an equal width subintervals okay so we're going to have a equaling x0 less than x1 less than x2 less than xn equaling b okay and let's say that our curve maybe it looks something like this and so maybe this would be a point here like let's say that's xi minus one let's say that would be a point xi and maybe this would be a point xi plus one okay so i think clearly what we're going to do here is we're going to approximate this by using line segments okay and maybe this guy now it's not supposed to be straight uh, I meant this to be a little bit different. Let me start over. Let's say it's going to be like this. And I've got this point, this point, and this to here, goes to here, and it goes through that. Okay. So at this point, PI minus one, and at this point, PI, we can figure out perhaps how far it is from there to there. Okay, we're gonna do this at the whole curve. So we're gonna approximate the length of the curve by using our distance formula, okay? So the distance from PI minus one up to PI, well, it's gonna be the square root of the difference of XI minus XI minus one squared plus YI, YI minus one squared, okay? So this is coordinates xi minus one, yi minus one. This guy would have coordinates xi and yi. Okay, now remember that yi, the point xi, yi is on the curve. So this is actually that, okay? And so substituting this in, PI minus one up to PI, it's going to be the square root of 
Okay, now xi minus one, xi minus xi minus one, that's delta x, if you remember. Delta x is b minus a over n. Above I said equal width, so it's xi minus xi minus one, okay? And the yi's, well, this is, f of x i minus f i minus one squared, like so. Okay. Now, obviously what we're, what we're after here is we're gonna try to find and get a Riemann sum out of this that's gonna turn into an integral. All right, so. There's some things we can do here, maybe. First of all, let's observe that the length of the curve is approximately, is going to approximately be the sum, i equaling one to n, of all of these little guys, okay? And eventually we're going to define L, not find it, but define it to be the limit of this sum. Okay, now this should come as no surprise because this is how exactly we did with area. At some, you just declare it to be the case and then you hope that it matches with known results. Okay, so back to our thing here. PI minus one up to PI what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna put in something plus F of X I minus F of X I minus one divided by delta x squared and then multiply on the outside by delta x squared and that's all under the radical. Let me clear, clean that up. Okay. Okay, now if I back out of that delta x thing, it's gonna be the square root of the delta x squared. And this i minus one, rewrite what delta x was, it was xi minus xi minus one squared and then I multiplied by a delta x squared, and I get that. Okay, so look, we're almost home here. This is going to equal the square root of 1 plus f of xi minus f of xi minus 1 divided by xi minus xi minus one, quantity squared, close this off, delta x. Okay, now, this isn't a Riemann sum just yet when we add this, when we add these things up, okay? So, what we need is some kind of an expression that we can put in here, okay? All right, so does that expression that's being squared, does that look familiar to any of you? It looks like the, the thing we did, in, I can't remember what it's called. Difference quotient? The difference quotient, yes, thank you. Sorry. Yeah. 
difference, difference quotient. quotient. Okay, so it looks like the difference quotient, okay? Now, here is where we're gonna use a, a force of condition. Okay. If, if F is a C1 function on AB, then by the mean value theorem, there exists some Xi star sitting in between Xi minus one and Xi such that F prime of Xi star equals F of Xi minus f of xi minus one, xi minus xi minus one. Okay, so this is that mean value theorem. Didn't really test you guys on any of this stuff last semester, and I told you that this is just the workhorse. We, we use it for, you know, for lots of, lots of things. Okay, so if I plug this in, What we've got here is the distance from PI minus one to PI now is equal to the square root of one plus this F prime of F of XI star squared delta X. Okay, the length, the length is approximately equal to the sum from one to n of this thing. Come on, draw. And so what we'll do is we will define the length. This is this thing where I remember when I was when I was learning this stuff, not in high school, high school is, you know, jock. But when I'm learning this stuff, it was kind of surprising to me initially that, you know, we have to define what the length is instead of find it. Now it makes more sense, you know, because I've been doing this for so long. But what we're going to do is we're going to define the length to be the limit as n tends to infinity of the sum i equaling one to n of these guys, okay? Which is now gonna be the limit as n tends to infinity of the sum i equal one to n square root of one plus F prime of XI star squared delta X. And we see that this is a Riemann sum for the following integral. If F is a C1 function on the interval a b the length of this curve is given by the integral from a to b of one plus f prime of x squared dx okay other ways you will see this formula and we're actually going to play with play around with it today like this Sometimes you might want to write it. You guys have, who have been in my class before, assure everybody that my handwriting is not this wiggly. It's, it's the Apple pen. Uh, At least it doesn't randomly erase shit, though. I'm just messing with you. Your, your handwriting was better in class. Yeah, much better. 
Uh, up I mean, here, up here, I had a pretty good run. I would say that is that reminded me of step in class, man. The only thing that looks weird like the integrals. Those are like, oh yeah. Did I, I see integrate. this thing? Yeah. That looks like I then scroll up this. I think what happens is I push too hard with the pen. Okay, so this is our formula, all right? And obviously the thing that's going to make these integrals a pain in the ass is the square root sign. Okay. Now we can't just randomly write something down and hope it works. Okay. So let's, let's try, let's try something first that we know the answer to. Okay. So let's let Y equal the positive square root of one minus X squared. Okay, so we're gonna figure out, what the top length is of the top part of the circle. Okay, now what's the circumference of a circle of radius one? It's two pi, right? So that means that the length that we're after is gonna be pi. Okay, so, so for the formula, I need to figure out y prime so that's gonna be two radical one minus X squared negative two X. Y prime squared is gonna be X squared over one minus X squared. And so our length that we're defining is from negative one to one. And then it's the square root of one plus x squared, one minus x squared, dx. Okay, I'll give you a second here to catch up. Okay, now what I'm gonna do next here is I'm gonna, I'm gonna common denominator it. And a grow from negative one to one one minus x squared plus x squared over one minus x squared dx. Negative one to one. Oh, sleeve of one. <laughs> They're both talking about throwing up. It was, they had seven minutes and 10 seconds to eat as many hot dogs and I think Sleeway 10. Now he's talking about bark. Okay, so back to this problem. Here we go. Put my earphones away now. We just end up with this, okay? Which we know to be the sine inverse of X evaluated at negative one and one. And so that's gonna be the sine inverse of one minus the sine inverse of negative one. And so that's gonna be pi over two minus negative pi over two. And so we do in fact get pi. All right, so what we concocted at least worked for this example, okay? All right, now notice here that the sine inverse of one on your calculator is gonna say 90. And sine inverse on your calculator of negative, uh, of negative one is gonna say negative 90. So I've been kind of advertising this for a while, but now we're finally here. We can't say that a, that a road is 180 degrees long. That just doesn't make sense. But pi is an actual real number that can be measured and stuff like that. So that's why we do this. All right, so now let's work on our own problem, all right? So how about we figure out the length of like y equals x squared? Okay. Okay, so solution 
our Y prime. Uh-oh, new office from new message from Suarez. Let me look at it on my phone. Maybe she's got update for you as well as me. Let me see here. Um, now Chancellor shared his weekly message. No, just a bunch of mumbo jumbo. I'll read it later. Okay, so our Y prime is 2X and our length is then going to be the integral from zero to one of the square root of one plus two x quantity squared dx okay so now we're just integrating and let's see what I would want to do here is I would want to say that 2x is equal to the tangent of theta or x equals the tangent of theta divided by 2. dx is then going to be 1 half of secant squared theta d theta okay so now plug all that stuff in one plus the two x which is the tan squared of theta gonna erase these bounds here okay and then the dx is this one half secant theta d theta. Okay, now, when x is one, the tangent of theta is two. That's not an easy angle. Okay, so let's just put check marks here. Because if the tangent is two, then it's going to be a two. There's a square root of five in the Okay, so look what happened here. We ended up with one half times the integral of this secant cubed thing. That's what I'm telling you guys. This thing shows up so much. Okay. So let's see if we remember it. This is going to be oops, equal to one half then it's going to be one half of secant theta tan theta plus the natural log of secant theta plus tangent of theta. Okay. Okay, now. The tangent of theta is 2x, okay? Tangent of theta is 2x. So, if here's theta, here's 2x and one, and then complete the picture, one plus 4x squared, which is what we would have. Okay, so this is going to be one fourth. The secant of theta is going to be the square root of, remember, evaluated a check mark, check mark. Okay, so the secant of theta is going to be this one plus the four x squared, and then times the two x plus the log. Hey, Bobby. Of, yeah. Hey, somebody in the chat just asked, why did it become the secant cubed theta? Or sorry, secant cubed, not secant cubed theta, sorry. Uh, yeah, right there, the one half uh, integral secant cubed d theta. That's what because, because my squared sign didn't write down 
like oh, this so pensum. See, okay, so see that? Yeah. I wrote that, but it didn't show up. I just wrote it again. Sometimes, like I'll be writing, and then it just stop. Oh. I know Wait, this so apple. Secant squared. Yeah, that's secant squared. Because remember, that came from the dx. Oh, okay. Okay, so it is in fact the secant cube integral. Okay, and then this is going to be plus two x evaluated. Now we go back to our original bounds from zero to one. Okay, so when I plug in a one, one fourth square root of five times two plus the natural log of two plus the square root of five. Okay, and then when I plug in zero minus one fourth of that's going to be zero plus zero because you're going to get the log of one. And so look at what this ends up equaling. Two radical five plus the natural log of two plus radical five all over four. I bet you you wouldn't have guessed that that was the, I mean, I mean, I wouldn't, you know. Um, okay, so. Professor? Yep. So um, is it just a formula? Usually we just have to apply the formula for the sums, the one which you derived. Yeah, all you're going to do is you're going to take the function and you're going to plug it into one of these two formulas right here. Then okay. you're stuck with the job of trying to integrate. Okay, so first we just differentiate the function, and then plug it in, right? Mm -hmm. We have to square it and all that. Okay, thank you. Okay, now Can you this a tiny bit, Bobby, real quick, just so I can see that uh, one quarter right there. That's fine. Sorry, I just want to see the one quarter two to square root of five. Okay. Okay, now when we get into the exercises here. Um, he's going to say, set up, but don't evaluate. Okay, now, why do you think that is? We don't know how to evaluate them yet. Because they, they cannot be done in a closed form, okay? So one of his examples here, he has y equals sine x, okay? Now, try as you might, y prime is going to be cosine x, okay? So the length here, let's say we were trying to find the length uh, from 0 to zero to pi, okay? So, you know, the, the top hump, the length of that guy. So it's going to be the square root of 1. So there goes the pencil not drawing again for that time. I caught it. One plus cosine squared x dx. Okay. Then use your calculator. Okay, so let's let's just see. I want us to investigate this. Like, why why is this not happening? Okay, so if that was one minus cosine squared you're going to get something okay but it isn't maybe we um, could use our, our is idea the, professor is the bounds given before yeah I, I just made the problem up it's in number yeah it's okay. number it's number three in the exercises that i'm looking at got it i Thank switched you. to my seventh edition white book because it's skinnier mm -hmm. um but this is just gonna you're just gonna be chasing your tail around you're going to go from 0 to pi, maybe use the half angle formula. <clears throat> but as you can clearly see here, this is not helping. So this is the unfortunate part of, the, uh, of this business is sometimes you just get these integrals that you have to approximate. 
So when you do look in the exercises, he gives you problems like this, where I've got, let's say, find the length of y equals x cubed over 3 plus 1 over 4x from x going between 1 and 2. Okay, now I bet you that if I gave you uh, three choices on an exam and I said, okay, find the length of one of these guys. I have a pretty good idea that most of you would selected would have selected this one and gone with it. But maybe some of you would have selected the sign one and gotten nowhere. I can pretty much promise you that none of you would have selected this because look how ugly it looks, okay? And if you get into the exercises, you're gonna see a bunch of funky, funky ass problems, okay? Now the reason for this is because they all happen to work out. Like I said, when you just put some random thing in here, like even if I did X to the fourth, I'm gonna get an integral I can't do. Then I'm gonna have to approximate. Okay, so we've got our Y prime, which is going to be X squared and then minus one over four X squared and then one plus y prime squared is equal to one plus x to the fourth, multiply the two inside things together and double minus a half, square the last thing, one over 16 x to the fourth. And what we see is this ends up being x to the fourth plus one half plus one over, and how about I write it as four x squared squared. And what we see is that this is the perfect square of x squared plus one over four x squared squared. And so the length is the integral from one to two of the square root of one plus y prime squared dx. And so it's the integral from one to two square root of x squared one over four x squared squared dx. Now make sure everything is positive before you cancel the square and the square root. It is. So now I'm going to go from one to two of x squared one over four x squared dx. So now we just do it. x cubed over three and then this is going to be x to the negative one over negative one, evaluated at one and two. So it's gonna be eight thirds minus one eighth minus one third minus one fourth. So eight thirds minus one third is seven thirds. And then that's a fourth minus an eighth. So that's plus an eight. And so this I think is 59 over 24. That's what I get. Okay. All right, take a second here.
Anybody need any clarification on that problem? I'm still writing as fast as possible, so I can't even think yet. Well, let me give you guys some advice. Speaking of Brian, feverishly writing all this stuff down. So the best student that I ever had, not the brightest student, that was Wesley, but the best student I ever had this guy named TJ and he and I uh, eventually became friends. I'm sort of the unofficial godfather of their daughter, even though I haven't met her yet. Um, and his way of studying was, oh, sorry, I'm eating a sweet tart while well, Brian finishes writing this down. But, you know, he would come to class, he would take notes in class, he never left class until I left, and it discounted in, in, in every class. And then he would go home into another notebook, and he would then recopy his notes and, and you know, organize them a lot better, okay? So basically, he's getting the lecture twice. I think if TJ was a guest in our class, his advice to you would be, since all of this is being like filmed somehow and loaded up onto YouTube, right? Yeah. That you could do the note taking then and, you know, push pause and stuff. I'm not trying to slow you down, Brian, but what I'm oh, saying no. is that this is what I, I can almost hear, I can almost hear him ringing in my ear, you know? <laughs> that's what, that's what I do at work. <laughs> he was, he impressed me so much as a student that I, I want him talking to my kids about, okay, this is how you go to college. You know, this is what we do. Not this, this, you know, and maybe they'll listen to him. Nobody ever listens to dad. Okay, so before we do another one of these things, let's just kind of play around with it. Okay, so um, if we look at, Let's say, for example, let's say y equaling f of x is a C1 function on the interval a to b. And let's, let's kind of do what we did with the area thing. Let's let s of x be the integral from A up to X of this, of this uh, arc length formula. So it's gonna be one plus dy dx squared dx, okay? All right, now, the fundamental theorem of calculus tells us that if I take the derivative of this side, ds dx, it's just going to be the square root of one plus dy dx quantity squared. I'm taking the derivative of this equaling the derivative of that. That's the fundamental theorem of calculus. part one, okay? Now, think of all of these things as differentials. We already have some kind of an understanding of how to think of dy and dx from pictures that we've drawn before. And here's that next time that I promised you this picture would be drawn. If you think of these things as differentials, what I'm gonna have here is that ds divided by dx is the square root of one plus dy squared over dx squared. If I common denominator the inside, it's gonna be 
dx squared plus dy squared divided by dx squared. And so this says that um, ds dx, if you square both of these, you're going to get dx squared plus dy squared over this dx squared. So what this says is we have this relationship. ds, whatever the hell it is, satisfies this Pythagorean theorem looking equation. OK. Now, over here, let's write what ds is, OK? It's going to be the square root of the 1 plus, I mean, I already have this written down, but I want it more available, squared dx, OK? Now, I'm going to undo this whole process by dividing everything by dy squared. OK, so if you reverse engineer this, what ends up happening is I'm going to say, OK, then ds over dy squared is going to equal so I'm going to divide both sides by dy squared. 1 plus dx over dy squared. So that's not supposed to be a square right there. So that means that ds dy is going to be the square root of 1 plus dx over dy squared which then now gives us an alternative form of looking at this. OK. OK, now for Eduardo, for sure, and anybody who's majoring in physics in the audience, this is important, OK? If I, if I asked you, what the area is underneath this curve, you would probably ask, okay, well, where's the x-axis? Is it here? Is it here? You know, that, that question depends on where the x-axis is. If I asked you what's the slope of the tangent line right here, you need to then ask, okay, is the x-axis the way and y-axis the way I think it is? Or is it tilted a little bit? In which case, the slope relative to this axis set of axes would be different than the slope of the line relative to that axis. But no matter how you do your axes, whether it's like this, Maybe they're rotated around where this is X and this is Y, that's X, that's Y. Maybe you're upside down X and Y like this. The thing that never changes is how long the curve is. It is invariant, okay? Areas is going to depend on where things are, are at and so on. Okay, but the length of the curve. No matter how you eyeball it, whether you spin it this way or this way, you know, if you spin this curve a little bit up, the area underneath this curve and the x axis is going to change. Agreed? You rotate this curve up, this tangent line's slope is going to be changing. But one thing that isn't changing is how far it is. The length of the curve is invariant, OK? So that's why we have these two formulas, OK? So as a consequence of this, and this is just this little result for us, that 
if x is a function of y, and if this is a C1 function on some interval C to D, just by reorganizing what the letters are, the length of the curve is going to be, goes again, is going to be the integral from A to B, and then it's the square root of one plus dx dy squared. Now it's a dy interval. Okay. All right. So here's here's where before I do another example, here's where this is going. Okay. If you have a curve, let's say your curve is given by y equals f of x, or maybe parametrically, which we'll be talking about in chapter 10, okay? Um, when you go to find the length of the curve, you know, we have this s function, and this s, this arc length function, would be the integral from a up to x of one plus, and we'll use the standard one, dy dx squared, and then the dx goes right there. Okay. Now, if you were to move, let let's say that let's say that this is the the x-axis here and what what i've done is let's say it's marked off in feet okay so that's one foot that's two feet okay now the curve is going to go from here to like let's say there and then it's going to go up and around and do that kind of stuff from there to there Okay, now, would you guys all agree that the length from here to here is longer than one? Yeah. Yeah, and how about here, this length? Longer than one, right? Okay, so what we like to do in engineering and in physics is we like to reparameterize the function in terms of its arc length, meaning that if I go a distance of one unit in the variable, that means I have gone a distance one on the curve, okay? So in, in I'll, I'll pick a problem and do it like after break for, you know, for you guys that are gonna, you know, stick around. But um, in any event, when we get up to math 280 and we're talking about motion in three dimensions, okay, we're going to have like, let's say, a curve that's out in the x, y, z plane. If a particle is moving on this curve, it has a tangential component to its motion. There's also this other thing, this normal component. And then there's this third one, which is called the B vector, or it's the binormal vector. And as, you, as this particle goes on this curve, all three of these vectors are perpendicular to each other. And it turns out that if you parameterize the, your curve in terms of its length, the derivative of the tangent vector gives you the normal vector. Now that only works when you're parameterized with arc length. Okay, so this is gonna be uh, in the fall for some of you with either, uh, I was doing 280, Doug, maybe Stan, maybe Andy, I don't know. Okay, so anyways. That's a little aside there. Okay, let's do another one of these problems in the book. 
So how about I do this guy? So y equals one minus e to the negative x, zero less than x less than z. Okay, so one plus y prime squared is one plus e to the negative x squared. So this is equal to one plus e to the negative two x. So the length of the curve is gonna be the integral from zero to two, and it's the square root of one plus e to the negative two x dx. Okay, now we're gonna have to let the fun begin. So now we're just integrating. Okay, so you guys wanna give me some, some hints here or do you wanna just see the magic happen? Can we make a u equal e minus two uh, two over x? No, uh, we're gonna we're gonna have to do something here. You we're gonna eventually have to think about that. So let me keep massaging the thing around. Remember that's a negative two x. So what we've got here is one plus. Okay, now before I do anything else, do you see it? Yeah. You see it, okay. Okay, so for the rest of you guys, here I'm gonna do another step now, zero to two, I'm gonna common denominator the fraction of, okay. Yeah, you take the top part as u. Well, do we? Yeah. Then where's du? Oh, yeah, so. Um... You All right. Uh, one over e uh, square x, right? And then we have du as e to. Okay. okay, so let me write one more version of it. Okay. Let me write another version of it. See what I'd be doing in classes would be this stuff. I'd be going, okay, who sees it now? Is it, is it one of the identities? Well, eventually we're gonna we're gonna do something. Okay, so let's see here. If I was to let u just be regular old e to the x, then du is gonna be e to the x dx, which is u dx. So that means that dx is gonna be du divided by u. Okay, and when I do this integral now, it's gonna be from one to e squared. So now I don't have to change the bounds anymore. The top is the square root of u squared plus one. The bottom here is gonna be u, and now I've got du over u. 
which is the integral from one up to e squared of the square root of u squared plus one divided by u squared du. All right, now that to me looks like an integral we can handle. Okay, then hopefully you guys are all thinking trig substitution. And let's hope this doesn't lead to the secant cubed integral or worse, secant to the fifth, that's even worse. Okay, so u is gonna be the tangent of theta. So the du is secant squared of theta. So our integral becomes, okay, now I'm not gonna even go there. So this is gonna be the square root of tan squared plus one. Secant squared, so it's gonna be secant theta times the du, which is going to give me two more. And then downstairs, I have tan squared theta. All right, so there's probably some simplification that we can do here. If I go one over cosine cubed theta and then sine squared theta over cosine squared theta d theta, we end up with the integral of d theta over cosine of theta sine squared of theta, which is the integral of secant theta times cosecant squared of theta d theta. Okay. Now what? Probably gonna have to integrate by parts, right? Yeah. Okay. So keep in mind I've already used U. So we'll do A and D B. Okay, so A is I want I want D B to be the easy antiderivative. So this will be the secant of theta. Let me do it over here. Okay, so A is gonna be secant of theta. DA is gonna be secant theta, tan theta, D theta. DB, is cosecant squared theta d theta. So that means b is negative cotangent of theta. Okay, so hey, our, yeah. Uh, Fook had a, a question or maybe he just solved it. He said it's one plus the cotangent of x squared equals the cosecant of x squared. Say that again. Sorry, Fuchs said it was one plus the cotangent of x squared equals to the cosecant of x squared. Um, yeah, that's an identity. Uh, okay, I, might, I, I, I might just was it. throwing that in because that was in the chat and I know you don't read it, so I just wanted to. Yeah, I can't read it because I, yeah. I have to stop the screen. No worries. Maybe if I had two devices going. No, but see, I can't. Anytime I have two devices going, the, the noise gets all weird. You know, this, this really screwed up Tyler's plans, Booger's plans, you know? Mm. Okay, so here we go. It's AB, so that's going to equal negative secant theta cotangent theta plus minus the integral of this times that, okay? So that's just going to be a secant theta, d theta. And so this is going to be the natural log 
of secant theta plus tangent of theta minus the secant of theta times the cotangent of theta. Cotangent is cosine over sine. So let's see here. One, one over cosine theta, cosine theta over sine theta. Okay, so it's cosecant. So it's going to be the natural log of secant theta plus tan theta minus cosecant of theta. Okay, so now we have to go back up here. We have to get back into the u. Okay, so tangent of theta was equal to u. So here's theta. The tangent of theta is u. Finish the triangle. So now this is going to be the natural log. The secant of theta, which is the square root of one plus u squared, plus the tangent of theta, which is u, minus the cosecant of theta, which is going to be the square root of one plus u squared over u. And all of this stuff is going to get evaluated at one and an e squared. Okay, so it's the log of radical one plus e to the fourth plus e squared minus radical one plus e to the fourth over uh, e squared. And then I got to subtract off when I plug in the one, the natural log of radical two plus one minus radical two over one. Okay, there you go. So let me ask you this. You expect me to put this problem on the test? <laughs> Or maybe just to see who's who's doing what and how to how they're doing it. It'd be a cold day in hell before I put that on test. Yeah. <laughs> this one's yeah. That could happen soon. <laughs> this is uh yeah, I'm trying to think where we started this one. Was this the one that started as y equals one minus e to the minus x? Yeah. Yep. Oh my god. <laughs> there it is. It's just so horrible. Okay, but you say that now. Yeah. Okay, but wait until you get into your physics courses. You're just crossing your fingers that it goes somewhere that you don't have to approximate. You know, yeah, this is annoying. It's a whole lot of steps. I probably made some mistake, lost a negative somewhere. Would it you ever might go to the point where this long and it just ends up being zero or undefined? Well, sometimes, you know, you, you know, I, you just, start with y equals x to the fourth, you're going to have to integrate one plus, you know, some kind of a number in front of x cubed, whatever, you know, x to the sixth. So it's a one plus, then it's going to be four x cubed squared. And this is, you have to approximate those things, you know? Okay. Because I was so, thinking if it were anything, like there would be like a clue to as it having an endpoint or not having an endpoint, like an undefined or an actual number, like answer like this. Because this is basically the end, uh, the end, right? Of this problem. Yeah. And so that is the closed form of you know, of the answer. Okay, let me do one with Y's. Okay. Um, I had a question. 
Okay. Um, I didn't get the integration of by integration by parts in the previous sum. Yeah, this one. So, um, how do you get just secant theta d theta? One over cosine is secant. Oh, what, um, are you talking about up here? Or, yeah, uh, oh no, the one here. with i, the one with the i, because the formula is. Okay, so um, what's co what is cotangent times tangent? Cotangent. Okay, it's one. So that's why it's less, you're just left with the okay. one. Okay, yeah, okay, got it, thank you. Okay. Uh, let's try one with some y. So x equals something. How about uh, this one? Uh, X equals, I'm going to turn my light on, my reading glasses even. So X equals one, third square root of y times y minus three. Okay. All right, so we're gonna take a derivative, so I don't even know why he wrote it like this. But this is gonna be one third, whoops, x is gonna be one third and then it's going to be y to the three halves power minus one third y to the one half power. So x prime is going to be one half y to the one half power and then minus one sixth y to the negative one half power. Now, the one third and the three cancel. So that guy is just there. And so this is minus the one half. Okay, so once again, one plus x prime squared is gonna be one plus, and this is gonna be y over four. Multiply the two inside things together and double. Square the last thing, y to the negative one, or one over, y and the four thing. And what I get is y over four plus one half plus one over four y. And that is the square. Eraser. This would be the hard part of this problem. The square of the square root of y over two plus one over two square roots of y squared. Okay. So, and the length is from one to two. Okay. So the length is going to be the integral from one to two one to two of so the square root of this thing squared make sure everything is positive and so all those radicals cancel and so I'm going to get one half y to the one half plus one half 
y to the negative one half dy. And so this is going to be one half y to the three halves divided by three halves plus one half y to the one half divided by one half all one and two. Okay, so this is going to be one third of y to the three halves plus y to the one half, one and two. Okay, so one third of two radical two minus one, that's the first one plus radical two minus one. And so this is two over three radical two minus a third plus radical two minus one. So I guess five radical two over three minus four over three, which would be five radical two minus four over three. If I do this, you guys can see more of it. Okay. All right. That's actually great. That's a lot easier to read. I wonder what happens if I start writing right now. All right. Nice. Okay. Now let's see what else does he have in these exercises. So let me look here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, yeah, these are just all like, it's the same old thing, you know, same old problem after problem after problem. Um, and exercises 23 through 26, he, he just starts the problem off saying, use Simpson's rule. Okay, so what does that tell you? Can't do the interval, right? <laughs> all right. All right, so I don't want to do anything more over the weekend. I want you guys to just focus on intervals. Keep doing, do, do as many of these as you can, okay? All right, let's take a break here. And then for you guys that want to see specific problems done, I'll do them, okay? So I'll be back in a couple minutes, all right? Okay. All right. Are any of you guys doing anything fun this weekend or... No. No, I, I mean, I get to work, and then after oh, that, work from home. You, you work from home? Uh, so I, I help out at a gas station part time. Okay. After that, I come home and I dish out maybe another four or five hours uh, managing my family's ridiculous winery. Oh, that's cool. That's good. Yeah, but that's driving me. I'm getting a lot of gray hairs from that shit. <laughs> is it because all the stuff happening right now, or is it just because other stuff going on there? No, but there's a lot of there's a lot. I mean, there's the stuff here, but I mean, there's the shit that's still been happening over there, where I'm getting constantly harassed by uh, workers that work with us that are that have family members that work for us that are up in age. They're like in like their okay. 50s, maybe 60s. Oh, and they're concerned, so they want you to like pretty much not have them work but pay them so some of them can't i mean we gotta uh notice the government actually cares over there somehow somewhat uh, they regulate how many uh, uh of age workers they have and work them and let them work part-time okay uh, in my family since I've, I've been i've been i i handle the reins of everything that we do yeah i'd rather not lose these people to if they 
were exposed or I don't want them getting exposed and then sue me for letting them work and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, man, so, for sure. What I've I offered them and they they kind of already like said, oh, okay, that's that's perfect. Uh, where they can pick up like two hours or an extra hour. Whoever wants to work for that family member that's not going to be there, uh, just work an extra hour or an extra two hours and it'll go, that money that they make for those extra hours they make will go straight to that person. Oh, nice. So, I mean, they don't even have to be there and they'll get paid just to stay home and save. Yeah. And my, my I got my father, I got my uncles, I got uh my great grandfather who is still the technically the owner okay uh, i'm just the one that manages everything until uh he passes away and okay. it's gonna jump my grandpa it's gonna go straight to my dad and okay because he's the first one and shit uh then since my dad has always been hands off he does only testing stuff like wine testing okay uh he approved of it. My uncles approved of it. Actually, I was very surprised my uncles actually were like, oh, okay with it. Yeah. Uh, but it doesn't sit well with the people that want to work. They don't want to be locked up in the house and not have to say, hell no, go fuck yourself. I don't, I don't want you dying. I don't want to get sued. I don't want to, you know. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's a tricky place for any business owner. And I get that right now. And the fact that you, you don't know. And like you said, if somebody gets sick, they can sue you. I think that puts people in like a weird place. I definitely think, ev I mean, you know, I I assume by over there, you mean Mexico? No, 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 no. I, I mean, Spain. Spain? Yes. Oh, that's where you went. Okay. Because I was yeah, wondering, yeah, I'm like, yeah. where are you managing a winery at? I was like, over there, I was like, maybe you just means like South here. Okay. So you manage a winery in Spain. Okay. So are there legal rules similar to ours or? I want to say they're, they're a little more touchy. And okay. There's a lot more regulations that you have to go through. Uh, the FDA, uh, I have a few friends that were over there that work for the European FDA. Okay. Uh, exportation. Okay. They, ha they hand me off new laws. Oh man, I almost want to throw up because uh, I looked at them the other day. Uh, yeah. They have new laws that regulate working right now because of the yeah. new and it's some of it goes over my head and I have to call them up and see what's legal, what's illegal, how do I, you know? Yeah, no, I mean, this is a crazy time. Man. Oh, that's cool. So when you went over to visit your grandparents, did you also go and like check in on this stuff? Because you went there during like this, like the beginning of summer, right? Yeah, when I said that, I went over there to get tested and all that crap. That's when I went. I went there because I wanted to check up on my great grandfather and my great grandma. Yeah. I got you. Uh, they're up there in age. Like my great grandma's like a hundred and uh, oh, wow. and my great grandpa like man, 100. That's insane. 103. That's awesome. They're still living, man. Like uh, all of my grandparents passed away in their 90s, and I even thought that was like impressive. So uh, living their hundreds is kind of insane. That's cool. It's honestly, it's, it's the food, man. Like I, I don't like when I'm over there. I feel better. Like I don't feel like shit, you know, because of the food that I eat. Well, can you, I mean, not that I am, I mean, you're a cool dude, so not trying to say, oh, leave to go there, but can you, can you get a dual citizenship? I don't know anything about I have that. actually a triple citizenship. Oh, where's the other country? <laughs> so I wasn't born here in the in United States. I was born in Spain. Oh, okay. I have that, and then I have the Mexican one because of my mom. And okay. Then I came here to the States and did that, got, and got married and stuff like that. After I got legalized here. Oh, wow. So you have three. Well, I mean, that gives you the nice thing is you have options if stuff gets real weird here soon. So well, it's weird all over the world. <laughs> so. it, it is. Um, it is, man. But everybody's like I have buddies still in China. And as weird as it sounds, things have gotten a lot more relaxed over there, which I heard there was cool. another outbreak of a different uh, virus or that. Yeah, they're, they're, they're saying the, the swine flu. Uh, as far as I know, nothing's closed again there. Like here, like I have a friend who's been posting from uh, Shanghai Disney and stuff. So, I mean, I maybe this is like brand new as in like today or. Uh, yeah, it sounds like there. it's a new swine flu. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we'll see what happens, man. Swine flu killed whatever, like 80,000 people last time I was here, and we didn't talk about it at all. So we'll see if this one ends up, like, blowing up or not. 
Um, I don't think it'll be coming here. No, no, one's, yeah. travel, no one's traveling anywhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's the weird. Uh, that's a weird thing, man. I used to go there like all the time, and now a single flight to China that was three hundred bucks is like six thousand, depending on when you go. So it's like literally bonkers. Man, you're brave. I wouldn't go to China. Oh, I lived there, man. I told you that. It's actually it was a cool place. Taught it English is very cool, except for the smoke. Yeah, I mean the place I lived at was Shenzhen. It was across the border from Hong Kong. Like, okay, it was nice, man. I mean, it's it's definitely like yeah, there's smog and stuff. I would say it where I lived was slightly worse than a bad day in L.A., but not always that bad. That would be like the worst day was worse than like because I'll go to downtown L.A. occasionally. It's like kind of like that, a little bit worse than that on the worst days. So most of the time it was okay. In Hong Kong, did you end up going to the uh, Xinquang uh, Prefecture? Is that you mean where Bruce Lee is in Hong Kong, like near the uh, like the river stuff? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I have been, been there. That's cool. Yeah, I took one of those boats across, and I went to Hong Kong Disney, and I went to the yeah. You know, I didn't go to Big Boot, uh, but I was like near that area of the mountain. But yeah, man. I mean, it was cool. It was a honestly like an easier living. The problem is you're just you have to be a teacher if you're you know white or you're a foreigner. There's one job. You're a teacher. Hey, when um, I went there for as a tourist, like for like a week. I mean, wife. I couldn't be a, I couldn't be a prostitute. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you, you could be a prostitute. You have to have the legs though. <laughs> yeah. Gotcha. But you were saying, uh, Eduardo, you were there with your wife? Yeah, we went there from, with my wife. I got so dorky. I got invited to a wedding for her friend. So I had to tag along. Oh, wow. And Those are I was like, too. I want to wanna go see the statue. I want to go, yeah. you know, you know, do the Kung Fu pose. Uh, and then I also, since we were like near there, somebody in that was giving us a tour, he's like, by the way, Jackie Chan lives in this area. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah Hong Kong is cool, man. I, I don't think I'd ever want to live there. There's so many people, but uh, I liked it. And the parts of China I lived in, like, I mean, honestly, it felt similar to here. The only thing is, it's just like, even if you're fluent in Chinese, like your options are localization or market outside of China. You have like four job offers essentially you can do. So I was like, I was 25 or 24 at the time. I was like, I should come back home before I get too old. And now I'm doing the same thing still that I was doing after or when I was getting my first degree. So I had a, I had a tutor working for me. Yeah. When I was an undergrad, I was in yeah. charge of the, uh, the tutoring center. And this kid was from mainline China. Yeah. Wow. And he brought in, a translated version of the college entrance exam. This is to go to college in China to yeah. get a degree in, let's say, marketing. Okay. States improve the mean value theorem. Yeah, it's crazy, man. That's it's to crazy. get into college to major in art history. It's State and prove the mean value theorem. I'll never forget my first two students. They were these 18 year olds who they didn't do well on the, they have a high school exit exam essentially to get into college, kind of like what you're talking about. And it's the main thing. Every senior that's, they prepare the entire year for this test. And these two kids are from rich families and they didn't do great on it. So they decided to come here. So like I was just helping them prepare for our test, which was like a joke to them. So we mainly just hung out and talked and they, they did really well here. They liked it. Um, but yeah, I just remember thinking like, and it's just a different thing though. Like we were talking about last time, the biggest problem that China has is, I mean, biggest problems educationally that China has is that they just don't focus on like creativity. It is all just like regurgitation. Like you would, you could teach this to them. I mean, they probably already all know this, but if you ask them to like most people to create a formula because you're not taught to create anything, it's really, really, really difficult. That's why you don't see a lot of products being designed in China still. Today. Yeah, but aren't there a bunch of real high-end Chinese architects though? I mean, I'm sure there are. I'm sure because architecture can be creative, but there's also a side of architecture that is just constantly redoing the same thing using mathematics. I mean, you're talking about some of the brightest people on earth in one place, but they're maybe not going to come up with some symphony that's not been done before because they're trained this exact way to do something. They're going to be the best piano player you'll ever see on earth, 
but they may not be able to do something totally different than what they've been taught. Because it's really hard. I mean, you essentially Super be regulated, like, isn't it? Just because yeah. of the culture, like they, they want to stagnate the, the population into just traditional past uh, things that they've already known and familiarized. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, and this is, you know, I'm an outsider, so if somebody here is from mainland China, I apologize if I'm like speaking out of my butt, according to them. But from what I gathered was the biggest reason why all of this stuff is essentially like you just following and re reciprocating and constantly doing the same thing over and over again is because everybody had one child. If they had a son, they have no like social security system for most people. So your son is your social security system. So you're going to live with him when he gets older. And now because there's such a, uh, not an influx, but like less women there, they- Oh, that's why in married. Mulan, that's why in Mulan, her grandma lives. With them? Yeah. With them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and that's been that's been a traditional Chinese thing for a long time. The fact that now there's a one child policy was a tricky thing because, so that's one of the reasons why we have a lot of problems with like, there's less Chinese girls is because they all want a son because that's their retirement plan. And so they all like want the son, but now because there's less women, they also need to own a house for their son as well as a car. And like homes there are as expensive as here, at least if you live in a nice area, they're more expensive in a lot of places. Like the, the uh, apartment building I lived in for a two bedroom apartment to own, it was like 400,000 US and this was in 2011. And that was a two bedroom, maybe 750, 800 square foot apartment. So that was to own it. So we're probably talking about 800, 900,000 now. And this was in Shenzhen, like one of the richer cities. So yeah, I mean, you got this son, he's got to take care of you. He needs to have a house so he can get married so he can have kids, which is like the whole thing. So you got to send him to the best school so he can meet someone else. So maybe him and his wife can both have good jobs so they can then, so it's like this cycle of just constant, like um, just like forced stuff on people. But, you know, I mean, I don't know, man. I met a lot of cool people I was there. I met a lot of people's lives kind of bummed me out because like I'm an artist here and like I care a lot about like, you know, I'm a kid of the 90s, follow your dream, do all that cool stuff. That's why I'm essentially unemployed at 32 because I ran an orchestra and moved to China and now study programming because I was taught do what you believe in, you know. Um, but yeah, man, it's it's hard for the people who even just go to school and do the traditional path there. Like I'll meet people all the time. It's like, man, it's it's rough. So but yeah, it's it's just different cultures. I, I would say though, for most Chinese people's day to day life, like it doesn't feel very different. The only difference is because a lot of people are like, oh, communism versus what's going on here. The main difference is you just don't vote. That's like literally in my experience as far. Like I would talk to the people who I knew about the government the same way I'm talking to you guys about Gavin Newsom. And I was there for about a year and I never got arrested. But I did, you know, I didn't like publicly go out on the streets and preaching the you lay low like you're yeah, like, yeah but I, I think like as long as you're not like being aggressive you know like i'll you know i know people are weirded out by this but i went to church over there